Olivia de Valencia Almeida in international relations with a study on a war of words, strategic rhetoric and foreign policy legitimacy. Uh, hi everyone, my name is Olivia Meira, de Valenci Meira. Um, I am an international relations major and my thesis is on uh, rhetorical processes and justifications. So I first started out by wanting to know how international relations works, basically, at an international level. How do negotiations happen? How is something accepted when it shouldn't be? Um, was my first approach to the topic. And so to do so, I used a framework of a mode of action called rhetorical action, um, defined and developed by Frank Schimmelfennig. And basically the idea is that states use um, a community, community rules and rhetorical community to construct their arguments in order to fit that identity, to fit that speech. And so to do so, I decided to take two case studies, uh, the Kosovo crisis, um, mostly looking at speech acts by the US and Russia in 1999, uh, and the Crimean crisis in 2014, also looking mostly at uh, US and Russian speech acts in 2014. And so I applied this theoretical framework of rhetorical action and came to the conclusion that uh, states used strategic arguments uh, derived from their international community and this international community was defined by the United Nations principles uh, given that in the UN article 103, 103 uh, says that the UN Charter is above all other international um, organizations, international treaties, etc. And so what I found was that the US and Russia when they wanted to propose intervention, they would use uh, rules that were more, more focused on humanitarianism, human rights, the idea of history, ethnicity, um, whereas when someone wanted to oppose these interventions, they would use direct, almost direct quotations from the UN Charter, uh, such as sovereignty or territorial integrity. And what I came to the conclusion in my chapter three, after the analysis of the two case studies, I was like, okay, why do people use these principles? Like, why does it matter? You know, they're using it. It's not happening. Is it effective? Is it not? And so this is where the audience comes in. Um, states are both the creators and enforcers of international law in an anarchical system. So this means that there is no one there to say you're not following the rules. You're the one that is making them as you go. And so I discovered or I theorized, I guess, <laughs> that rhetoric is the way in which this negotiation occurs. If I say you're violating sovereignty, you will say, no, it's okay because of humanitarianism. And this allows for flexibility in international relations because it allows for a negotiation of the rules that, is, that are being both created and enforced by states at the same time. And so I, I developed a term uh, called uh, the threshold of respectability. Uh, where states, I basically came to the conclusion that states use rhetoric to reach this threshold and after they have reached this threshold is when the audience comes in that they decide, okay, are we going to endorse or reject this um, justification for intervention? Uh, and so membership, I argue that membership in the United Nations is not enough uh, to guarantee legitimacy, but it is through rhetoric that you can negotiate whether your actions are seen as legitimate or not, and it is ultimately the audience that decides this. And what I found in the end is, I would like to pursue this to topic further, um, in order to see how this legitimacy, this audience is influenced by power and the idea of multipolarity, uh, because the more you're in other organizations, the more you have already support to guarantee that legitimacy. So that was it. If you have any questions, talk to me later. Uh, thank you. <laughs>